ceremonies went a little bit late, as opening ceremonies tend to do. So we're on the air here at 8.13. Your first pitch scheduled for 8.15, and we're off and running here. Night baseball from Iron Men Park. The lights are already on, and uh, should be playing in nighttime here in about 35, 40 minutes, just around supper time for you guys in BC. So a nice treat for you. You get to watch the Sun Devils and have supper. Great to have you with us. B. McLean Sports on Twitter. Let us know where you're watching from. Comments, feedback, shout-outs, opinions. There's your first pitch of the ball game, and that is a strike to Brendan Reed. Brendan Reed, Herb, uh, Eric Herbranson, Pat Brown, and Dave Hole. Should anyone reach? Second pitch from Walsh, and there for a strike 0-2. Your Iron Men defense, Keating at third, Gallant at short, Godin at second, McDonald at first. Hardy in left field, Ori Cork in center, and Corcoran in right. Just off the outside edge. Morgan McLean, the Charlottetown Islander, forms the battery with Jamie Walsh. Sean Corcoran, Morgan McLean, Darren Hardy, all. Or uh, McDonald, Corcoran, and McLean all play for that Charlottetown Islanders team. That ball is fair down the first baseline, fielded cleanly by McDonald, and Brendan Reed is the first out of the ball game. So, again, this is a, a Chatham team comprised of McDonald, Corcoran, and McLean. Uh, they picked them up from the Charlottetown Islanders. And uh, I think Pat Godin, if I recall, is the player who came over from Moncton. One of two teams from New Brunswick, of course, these team, this the host team, Chatham and Fredericton Royals are the New Brunswick champs, and they got off to a good start with a nice three nothing victory today over Manitoba. It's a good Manitoba baseball team, the Brandon Cloverleafs. They defeated the Saskatoon Smoking Guns six to three. So the concession stands, the lines are finally empty. Everyone's in their seat and ready to go. Standing room only from Iron Men Park. Again, well over two thousand people here. And uh, talking to organizers, they feel pretty confident that it, should the Iron Men go to the championship game, they can put 3,000 people in here just like they did in 1995 when the Iron Men won the national championship here at Iron Men Park. Hot shot down the third baseline. That is fair for Eric Herbranson. He'll turn around first and got about halfway to second and head back. Had visions of a double, but he'll settle in with a single. So there's your first hit of the ball game, Herb Branson down the third baseline. Here's Pat Brown, the second baseman wearing number two, batting from the left side. So Herb Branson at first. The Sun Devils in the black, orange, and white uniforms, kind of reminiscent of the Baltimore Orioles color scheme. And the, the uh, Chatham Ironmen in their red and white with a little bit of black trim in there as well. Pitch on the outside edge of the strike zone for a ball. 1-0. and oh. Pat Brown, and we should see David Hole, who was the representative last night for the Sun Devils in the home run derby. In there for a strike at the knees. 1-1. One and one. Evan Douglas batting fifth. Will Devick. Batting at six, Luke Simpson, Morrison, and Bradford rounding out the batting order for the San Sun Devils of Kamloops. High in the air and nearly taking out a light atop the tower on the first base side. But that'll drift into the parking lot. Great to have you guys with us in Kamloops. I've been through there several times. And I've been through the city. It is absolutely beautiful. Very much like Chatham in the sense that it is hot in Kamloops. And for you folks in uh, Kamloops, you would fit right in here in Chatham. This is one of the hottest spots in Atlantic Canada. And Miramichiers love the heat. Temperatures today in the mid-30s with the Humidex. Runner goes. The throw down to second. And safe is Eric Herbranson. The throw comes a little bit late from McLean. And a good outside of the bag slide there for Herbranson. 
So Herb Branson safe at second base, now in scoring position. Again, the last time we saw Chatham play a BC team was the semifinal in St. John's. And a 1-0 victory for the Langley Blaze in extra innings. You can actually see that game on the network. If you go to the, if you're on community1.bellaline.ca, just click on videos and go to sports and events. Scroll over to baseball, and we have that game on demand. You can watch the Langley Blaze and the Chatham Ironmen. That's good information for you Langley Blaze uh, players and fans checking in. I know you guys are probably watching. Again, that was a pitcher's duel right to the bitter end. A one nothing game. I think that was an eight-inning game, I believe. Just required one extra inning. Curveball in for a strike, and out on strikes is Pat Brown. So Brown caught looking for the second out, and here's David Hole. David was the representative for the Ironmen last night, or for the... Uh, Sun Devils last night at the Home Run Derby. And he made it to the semifinals, came up just short. I believe he was the number four seed trying to beat uh, Jamie Peterson. And of course, Peterson went on to win that. Pitch high and outside. Our first shout out on Twitter. This is Morrissey Bridge. Thank you, guys. Big shout out to Ivan King cornerstone of the Ironmen. Morrissey Bridge watching <laughs> from between Newcastle and Chatham Head. Thank you, Morrissey Bridge. Great to have you with us. Our first reach out on Twitter. 1-0. Pitch up high, 2-0. So a good hitter's count here for the number four hitter in the lineup. Gorgeous night for baseball in beautiful Chatham. Temperatures in the low 20s, humidex in the high 20s, and a real nice uh, breeze blowing in from right field. And there for strike two and one. We've only had two home runs today, and they were both by the Saskatoon Smoking Guns on two pitches in the second inning. J.P. Wilner. And then Jace Mugley went yard to give the Smoking Guns at the time a 2-1 to one lead. They would later relinquish that and lose 6-3. to three. High in the air to short right field. McDonald backs up on it, calls for it, and makes the catch. And that'll do it for the Sun Devils in the top of the first. So one hit for Herb Ranson. One left on base, no Iron Men errors. We go to the bottom of the first, and our first look at the Chatham Iron Men. Ori Cook, Pat Godin, Robert Gallant, and should anyone reach, we'll see Chris Keating. Again, thanks very much to the organizing committee for the Chatham Iron Men. And the Nationals, they have us set up perfectly right here on top of one of the equipment sheds by first base. I'm pretty good. I, I feel pretty confident that I have the best seat in the house. I'd love to see someone tell me they have a better seat than this one right here. And uh, <laughs> As mentioned earlier, I get a lot of fans walking around giving me that envious look. Again, I'm on... Me and uh, Mark Andre up here on the top of the shed. We got beach chairs. Literally, you could just sit here and call baseball all day long, which is what we've done. Been on the air since 10 a.m. Back on the air tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. All right, so let's set your Sun Devils defense. Will Divick is the third baseman. Brendan Reed at shortstop. Pat Brown at second. Rob Morrison at first base. In the outfield, going left to right, Luke Simpson, Eric Herbranson, and Ben Bradford. 
Shane Kramer is your pitcher, and Evan Douglas forming the battery. Ori Cook, Pat Godin, Robert Gallant, Chris Keating, the top four. John Saunders, we'll talk about John as we go along. He's the number five hitter. Andrew McDonald, number six. Batting seventh, Sean Corcoran. Batting eighth, Morgan McLean. And batting ninth is Darren Hardy. So here's Ori Cook, a long time Iron Man. Batting from the left side, the center fielder wearing number 17. Got a shout out from Morrissey Bridge saying the audio is choppy. So if you're finding that too, let us know. Sometimes, a lot of times that can just be one person's computer. We just gotta kinda help them out. So uh, let us know, you're our ears and eyes out there as well. If you're finding the audio choppy, let us know. In there for a strike from the left-hander. Shane Kramer. So a nice righty versus lefty matchup tonight. One and one to Ori Cook. Pitch in there for a strike, one and two. Bill McLean with Mark Andre and Jamie Como, our producer. Brian Fisher, our executive producer. He's with the crew over at Waldo Henderson Memorial. Swung on to center field. Settling under it is Herb Branson. That's a lazy fly ball, and Herb Branson makes the catch. Or he cooked the first out of the inning. So here's Pat Godin. Pat, the second baseman, wearing number four and batting from the left side. In there for a strike. Assuming this BC team, again, this Kamloops Sun Devils team, is similar to the Langley Blaze, expect lots of good pitching. That Blaze team had guys who could just flat out deal. Another lazy fly ball for Herb Branson. Two quick outs here in the top of the first. Shortstop Robert Gallant. Batting from the right side. I'll say one thing, this Kamloops Sun Devils team isn't as physically imposing <laughs> as that Langley Blaze team. That Blaze team had guy had like six or seven guys who were all over six feet five, six feet six. Hot shot, and that's gonna just get under the glove of the shortstop Reed. That'll be a single for Robert Gallant. Good try there by Reed, but just couldn't come up with it. So the first hit for the Iron Men. Here's Chris Keating, one of the fan favorites, the third baseman batting in the cleanup spot. The Blaze had a guy, I remember the, one of the, the other broadcast crew last year. They identified one of the guys in the Blaze as the guy who most likely would be a wrestler. If you had to pick one guy in the tournament who looked like a wrestler, it was this guy from the Blaze. Pitch high and outside. What a wild 12 hours that was for the Ironmen. They had the extra innings win over the Sydney Sooners to get into the semifinal. That was one of the best baseball games you'll ever see. And then the extra innings one nothing loss to the Langley Blaze the next morning. Two balls, no strikes to Chris Keating. Chris wearing number five and batting from the left side. Oh, they got him picked off. They got Gallant picked off and now in the rundown. And a good tag there by Reed. And more on that in a second. We'll give you your totals. Turns into a three up, three down inning. Call it one, three, six. One hit, nobody left on, no errors. But uh, the Langley Blaze, that's not surprising to see, especially for a left-handed pitcher. And again, Shane Kramer. Uh, that's not surprising to see because 
there was a pitcher last year for the Langley Blaze who had just an incredible pickoff move. In the championship game, he picked off, and I'm not even exaggerating, I think he, it was three guys that he picked off in the first two innings. And his name escapes me, but for you BC fans watching, I'd love to know if it's the same guy. Shane Kramer, he's from Chilliwack, BC, which is, oh, I'm trying to remember my drive through BC, but Chilliwack is somewhere in between Kamloops and Langley. And I'd love to know if that's the same guy who was pitching last year for the Langley Blaze in that game, the championship game against uh, Ontario, where he, he had, it was just ridiculous how he was picking guys off at first base. And probably the third one, I think it was three altogether. The third one was the most phenomenal of them all. Right? I mean, he had, right there on that pickoff move, he had Robert Gallant completely hung out to dry. So you can reach out to me on Twitter. Then B. McLean Sports if you have any helpful tips on this uh, Kamloops Sun Devils team. Morrissey Bridge checking in. Uh, lifetime Ironman fan Ryan Summers watching from home. Great to have you with us, Ryan. Torres Achilles tendon playing baseball this summer, so all the best to you, Ryan. Hope that heals up quickly, man. That is one injury that you never want to have. That Achilles tendon. That's one of the painful ones. So all the best to you, Ryan, watching from home. To the top of the second, Evan Douglas. And Will and Luke coming up here. Rob Morrison. Should anyone reach? Jamie Walls out there for a second inning of work. First pitch in there for a uh, second pitch in there for a strike. One and one. Sun going down. We're in twilight here in Chatham. Again, just perfect, beautiful night for baseball in Miramichi. These folks around here, they've got it pretty good for baseball and weather. And for generations now, fans have been coming out here to Ironman Park and enjoying nights just like this. The one, two. High in the air to the first base side. Another chance for McDonald in foul ground and he'll make the catch right at the wall. Nicely done for McDonald. So Douglas flies out. That's the second put out in a row getting, dating back to the first inning for McDonald. And if you haven't noticed yet, it is really, you gotta be really careful on the walls on both sides down the first base and third base line. It's not a fence and it's not six feet high. It is a higher, it is a wooden uh, wall that goes the whole way and it's about three feet high. So for almost all these guys, maybe three and a half, four feet high at the most. So for all these guys, as you get over there, it pretty much comes up to your uh, mid thighs. So you gotta be really careful when you're playing balls along the Right field and for uh, left field lines. There's a single for Will DeVick. Put him at first base, the second hit for the Sun Devils. So here's uh, Luke Simpson, the left fielder. Just misses on the outside edge. Runner 
doesn't go. On the inside for a ball. 2-0. and oh. Decent lead at first. And a good throw over there. Good move, but getting back safely is Will. The 2-0. Out in front is Luke Simpson. Ryan Summers on Twitter. Great to have you with us. Ryan sending, asking for a shout out to local legendary announcer Hoppy Dunn. Cheering for the Iron Men. So a shout out to Hoppy. That's fouled into the parking lot. Just missing a 2005-2006 Nissan Versa. Two and two. Runner doesn't go. Called strike three. Out on strikes is Luke Simpson. Second strikeout for Jamie Walls. So a shout out to Hoppy Dunn, one of the local legends. Now back to the number 15, Rob Morrison, first baseman Morrison. As an announcer here in the Miramichi area. There's Rob Morrison, the first baseman. Swung on, and that is fair down the first baseline. Rounding second, heading for third is Will DeVick. They will hold him up at third and sliding into second with a stand-up double. Or sliding into second with a double is Rob Morrison. So runners at third and second now. The third hit of the game for the Sun Devils. And they got something going on here in the second. Good speed there for Morrison. There's Ben Bradford, the right fielder. Two outs. Runners at third and second. Your first pivotal situation of this game so far. Here in the top of the second. Swung on, hot shot up the middle, and that may score too. DeVick will score. Morrison rounding third, and he will score easily. Great speed for Ben Morrison, and it's 2-0 for the Sun Devils. An RBI, a two-RBI single for Ben Bradford, and then he takes second on the throw to home. So give Bradford two RBIs. And make the score 2 nothing for the Kamloops Sun Devils. And back to the top of the order for Brendan Reed. So the Sun Devils strike first. Swung on, and that's fouled on the third base side out of play. Three hundred feet down the left field line, three fifteen to right, and three eighty five to center. And it is a uh, bandbox of a field. Lots of quirky little edges. Again, they've mentioned the low wall down the first and third base lines. Hardly any foul ground at all. You are literally right on top of the players here. You got to have your heads up on foul balls too. And that includes us here in the broadcast area. Still waiting for our first streamer to come in here.
Check swing to third. Keating, the throw across. Lots of time to get Brendan Reed. So Reed now 0 for 2 to finish off the inning. But the Sun Devils send, send six men to the plate. They get three hits. They leave one man on. They push across two runs on a two RBI single for Ben Bradford. You're watching the championships right here on Bell Alliant Community One. Back in a few minutes to get you ready for your bottom of the second inning. The Iron Men are coming up to the plate. All right, back to it. And here is Chris Keating. You remember we saw Keating for a few fleeting moments back in the first inning. But Robert Gallant got picked off first base. Still waiting for your friends to reach out to us from BC. We'd love some information on some of these guys. Any tidbits you have? One, the one question I have right now is if Shane Kramer is the same guy who was pitching for the Langley Blaze last year. Again, the, he's a left-hander. He has that same body type. I was calling the game at St. Pat's ball field. I can't remember if his name was Shane Kramer. But, man, that pickoff move looked eerily similar. Keating up the middle, and that's going to get knocked down by the second baseman, Pat Brown. But Chris Keating will have himself this uh, single, and that's his second hit for the Ironmen. Well, here's John Saunders, and he is one of the favorites here in the Mirror Machine. If you ever want to see, if you want to see what this guy is all about, go to my YouTube page. Just type in Bill McLean on YouTube and NSSBL or something like that. I've got a whole bunch of games up there that we do on Community One that don't make it to the network. And I've got a highlighter. You can type in Bill McLean and John Saunders. Dramatic home run. In there for a strike to John, 0-1. And, and you can see John Saunders last year, his three-run home run off of Cameron Marling in that Chatham Ironmen versus Sydney Sooners qualifying game at Nationals in St. John's. The 0-1. In there for a strike, 0-2. John doesn't agree. But in that little clip, you can see John with the three-run blast off of Cam Marling. And up to that point, Cam Marling was absolutely rolling. He's the same Cam Marling who pitched the shutout today for the Sooners over Newfoundland Labrador. Good lead for Chris Keating. Pitched just outside, one and two. And John Saunders was basically on one good leg. He had a bit of an injury, or he had an injury in the game, stayed in. And after hitting the home run, took him about 30 seconds to get around the bases. He was hobbling around like Kirk Gibson against the Dodgers in 1988. There's that pickoff move again, and in safe is Chris Keating. And now I am convinced that that is the same guy who pitched last year for the Langley Blaze, Shane Kramer. Chris Keating talking to the umpire, man. That pickoff move, again, we saw him pick off three Ontario players last year in the first couple innings. One guy he picked off, why do I think it was Curtis Lampkin who he picked off? That's fouled back. But uh, 
his the pickoff move was so good that the Ontario runner just was on his back heels. He couldn't even move. And the first baseman caught the ball and just walked over and tagged him out. Just com literally completely froze the runner at first. The one two from Kramer coming up to John Saunders. Continue on that Saunders story. Low and inside, two and two. But Saunders went yard, a change up that Cam Marling says he wanted to try to get low and outside and got right down the middle of the plate. And Saunders sent it into the Mount Pearl night and hobbled around the bases with the best Kirk Gibson impersonation you ever you'll ever uh, find. And swinging out in front is Saunders of that pitch. So there's a strikeout for John Saunders. Uh, on the Twitter, Br Brad Votor watching in Moncton. Thank you very much, Brad. A fellow Miramichir cheering there in Moncton. Thanks for those kind words as well. So thank you, Brad. Andrew McDonald. The first baseman batting from the left side. Pitch in there for a strike. Chris Kidding still at first base. Here's the tweet I've been waiting for from the Langley Senior Blaze. Again, they're the national champs from last year in St. John's. To the plate, high in the air to short left field coming in to make the catch will be Simpson. So Simpson and Reed, good communication there and Simpson makes the catch. McDonald flies out to short left. But here's the tweet I've been waiting for from the Langley Senior Blaze, and indeed that is Shane Kramer, the same guy who pitched for Langley last year. <laughs> and uh, it, it was pretty, I was almost certain that it was him, because that, uh, again, that same body stature, the left-handed pitcher, and that pickoff move is one in a million. And so far, he has one pickoff to his credit. Don't be surprised if you see a couple more. And if you're Chris Keating, you are very careful there at first base. Now, there's an abbreviated form of that move. Just a quick throw over. And scampering back safely is Keating. 1-0. and That is a hit batsman. Sean Corcoran takes one off that meaty part of the right hip, right where you want to get it. And he'll laugh that one off. He'll take that all day. Get a free trip. Might have a small bruise in the morning, if anything. So Keating to second. Corcoran at first on the hit batter. And here's Morgan McLean, the outstanding catcher of the Charlottetown Islanders. Islanders having a great year in the regular season of New Brunswick senior play. I do believe that they might be the first place team right now, the Charlottetown Islanders. In there for a strike. The 0-1 from Shane Kramer. Down low, 1-1. But uh, on Championship Sunday last year, it was the pitching of the Langley Senior Blaze that was the major storyline. A looping liner to short. The locals were hopeful there for a second, but it dies just on the cusp of the grass and into the hands of Reed for the third out of the inning. Well, the Iron Men threaten the runners at second and first. They get one hit, they'll leave two on. No errors. So we'll go to the top of the third. More tweets coming in. Great to have you guys with us. This is uh, Jason Mallory. Uh, sending a shout out. Thanks very much for the welcome to the river. And uh, wants a shout out to the Chatham Head Tigers. 
So a shout out to you guys, the Chatham Head Tigers. And just wondering if that's the same Chatham Head Tigers team that I did uh, the call for last year in Yarmouth, Nova Scotia at the Bantam Championships. Uh, the Chatham Head Tigers went down there uh, to Yarmouth and won the uh, Bantam AA Championship in Yarmouth at uh, Gateway Field. So if that's you guys, uh, hello out to you guys. Great to talk to you again. You're about another month away from the uh, championships. Uh, all those championships usually go on in mid-September. What a great baseball team. That was just a, a big, mean, bashing baseball team. They had great pitching, and they could really knock the ball around the yard. So hello out there to the Chatham Head Tigers. Right, here it is, the uh, more information on Shane Kramer. Again, from the Langley Senior Blaze. Thanks, guys. Uh, Shane Kramer pitched a no-hitter versus this very same Kamloops team. Shane plays for the Langley Blaze. Uh, Kramer pitched a no-hitter versus Kamloops on July 31st in game one of their provincial championships. Here's a guy who no hit the team he's now pitching for. Sun Devils back to the plate. Looking to build on a 2-0 lead. Eric Herb Branson. Pat Brown and Dave Hole, the two three four hitters. And Jamie Walls out there for his third inning of work. Good ball game so far. The 1 0. Down low, 2 0. Good ball game and great crowd. Again, this place is jam packed with baseball fans. Easily over 2,000 people here. A historic Iron Men Park. Three and zero. One of the great minor baseball fields in Canada. A four-pitch walk for Eric Herb Branson. He'll trot on down to first base. Here's Pat Brown. Struck out looking back in the first. Pitch in there for a strike as Brown trying to sacrifice. Couldn't pull back in time. Decent lead at first for Herb Branson and a throw over from Jamie Walls. Herb Branson back in safely. Tell you one thing I, I mentioned how the, the Blades were kind of a, I saw, I always remember them as kind of a, being a big bunch of mashers who could really knock the ball around the yard with that great pitching. Kamloops, this, the thing that's striking me right now is their team speed. It just seems like every dude on this team can flat out fly. So they get some good speed on the bases from top to bottom in that lineup. Four hits so far for the Sun Devils. Pitch high and outside. One and two. The count coming up on Pat Brown. Runner goes. Pitch high and outside, and they'll concede second base.
Chuck Grady. Thanks very much, Chuck. This is great stuff here. I just mentioned Charlottetown's having a great year. Thought they might be in first place, but right now in third behind Fredericton and Chatham. So thanks very much, Chuck, for that on Twitter. Swung on and hot shot. That goes off. The net. you got to have your heads up, even on balls that go behind your head. Over there on the uh, first base side, they have a really high mesh that goes all the way just past third base. And if the foul ball goes over your head, especially a line drive, chances are good it's going to come back in your vicinity. You might take a baseball off the back of the head if you're not paying attention. Two and two. Swung on, hit sharply up the middle, and will they send the runner, Herb Ransom? He, they won't. They'll stop him at third. Didn't get a, a great read on that. Looked behind him, thought that the second baseman might have a chance on it. So it really didn't get going until it was well into the outfield, and they'll stop Herb Ransom at third. But a single for Pat Brown. So there's the fifth hit for the Sun Devils, and they're right back in business here with nobody out. Ryan Summers sending a shout out to all the Miramichiers out west. Great to have all you guys with us out there. Hit well to left center and gone. A three run shot. It went off a pole there so it came back like it kind of would have hit off the wall. But it cleared the wall by about 15 feet. And David Hole, a three run bomb. That's just the way you draw it up for your 2-3-4 action. You get the two and three guys on, and then the cleanup hitter comes up. A three-run homer for David Hole. That's the probably the best hit ball of the day so far. An absolute bomb. Five-nothing, and that's silenced. This obviously is heavily partisan. Iron Men crowd for the time being. Still a long way to go. We're in the top of the third. But 5 nothing for the Sun Devils. Making a statement here on opening night that they have come and mean business in the Miramichi. Evan Douglas. Grounded out to the pitcher, or popped up, or popped up to the first baseman, sorry in his first appearance. High and inside, one and one. Check that two and one, your count on Evan Douglas. Still no outs in the inning. Five nothing to score through three. Well, 50-50 guy. He's an outstanding, by the way, the guy selling 50-50 tickets here is outstanding. One of the best ticket sellers I've ever seen. He's gonna, he'll, he got me to buy three tickets. Two, uh, two and two, but uh, if this one doesn't turn around quickly, that might be the only reason for the folks to stick around here in a bit. That 50-50 draw is gonna be huge. Bouncing ball down the third base side, just foul. We'll do it again on the 2-2. Two -two. Chuck Grady, uh, again on the Charlottetown Islanders, uh, Islanders, again in third place, but only four games out in that ever-competitive New Brunswick uh, senior baseball circuit. Every year, that's a battle. We're going to talk things over on the mound here, and the bullpen getting up and getting busy. For the Ironmen, a bunch of guys scampering out here to the bullpen in right field. So more action on Twitter. The Blaze checking in. Uh, the last thing about Kramer here, uh, beat Coquitlam in the championship game 3-2. to two, And that is going to send the Langley Senior Blaze to Fredericton next year. What a stretch, eh? 
about as good as it gets for Atlanta Canada baseball fans. Last year in St. John's, Newfoundland, Labrador, this year in Chatham, next year in Fredericton. Here's Will Devick. Pitch down low, 1-0. Oh. So Douglas at first base. Just off the plate. Off the plate again. I mean, two and zero right now at the count. Check that three and zero. A decent lead for Douglas off of first. Walls in there for a strike, three and one. No, Walls will try to get back into this count. The three one. Runner goes. And ball four. Runners at second and first. Now the Sun Devils looking to add on here. Leading 5 0, runners at second and first. Here's Luke Simpson. Simpson got caught looking in the second. He's 0 for 1 with the strikeout. Again, they're going to go out there and talk to Jamie Walls. They are just trying to buy time right now. Chances are very good we are going to have a reliever coming in for Jamie Walls. A quick trip there for catcher McLean. The first pitch in there for a strike. Simpson, Rob Morrison, and Ben Bradford, the 7 8 9 hitters, now all do up. Barring a double play ball. Walls from the stretch. Inside, 1 and 1. Swung on, deep to center field. Ori Cook settles under it, makes the catch. And a great throw into third base. Evan Douglas faked going to third. So there's the first out of the inning. Simpson deep to center field. There's Rob Morrison. Morrison had a double and scored a run back in the second. Morrison, a big drink of water. Batting from the left side, wearing number 15. Kind of got that old school batting stance. What a great stance. Looks like something right out of the 1940s or 50s. Owen one. Feet about three feet apart, waving the bat behind his head. Takes a decent cut at that pitch, fouls it off down the first baseline. 0 oh 2 quickly on Rob Morrison. The 0 2 with one out. 
Runner still at second and first. Just foul, fouling off that heater for the backstop. Another 0-2 pitch coming up. Swing and a miss out in front is Morrison. And now Wall starting to fight back into this thing. Trying to limit the damage. The fly ball, the strikeout. That's his third. And here's Ben Bradford. So Bradford, the left fielder, he had the two RBI single back in the second. Runners with moderate leads. And therefore a strike to Bradford. Doesn't agree. 0-1-1. Back on the air tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Action all day long. From Iron Men Park and Waldo Henderson. And therefore a strike out in front now. And Ben Bradford swinging at a pitch in the dirt. He's going to take a step out. Try to get his head together. 0-2 now. Just off the plate. Your Fredericton Royals fans are with us tomorrow morning. From Iron Men, your first look at Saskatchewan. So the Smoking Guns versus Fredericton tomorrow at 10 a.m. You Sooners fans you're versus uh, British Columbia. So you uh, Kamloops fans, you're on Waldo Henderson tomorrow morning. Foul ball, just out of play on the first base side. Bunch of <laughs> kids had to have their heads up over here. As always, one of the signatures of the ballparks is about 15 to 20 kids playing catch over here in foul or uh, out of play. One and two. So an early wake-up call for you Sun Devils fans. Set your alarm for 6 a.m. Bouncing ball to short, and that gets under the glove of Gallant. Coming home to score is Evan Douglas without a throw. And we'll see how that scored. Evan Douglas will score. Whether or not that'll be a hit or an error. But Bradford at first. And Will Devick into second. One and two. And therefore a strike. Bouncing ball to second. A chance for Godin to first and that'll do it. Four to three. Goes Brandon Reed in his third appearance in three innings. But another big inning for the Sun Devils. They send nine men to the plate, score four runs. The big hit, the uh, three run home run for David Hole. And then Douglas coming around to score. 6 nothing Sun Devils. Three hits, no errors. So that was a hit for, Ray, for Ben Bradford. Give him an RBI. Two left on. So still 6 nothing.
Mora coming in on Twitter. Got some great stuff going on, on Twitter right now. Uh, this is uh, Matt Mutchison. Great to have Matt with us. Matt, I was calling you Matt Mitchison there for a bit. A Manitoba fan had to reach out to me. I had to, uh, when you're, the fever, it's always a feverish scramble to write down lineups. I had written an I instead of a U. But uh, Matt reaching out on Twitter saying, uh, where's the velocity? Hashtag radar gun, hashtag muffins. Thanks very much, Matt. Or thanks very much, Matt Mutchison. Matt silently pitched himself an absolute gem today. Slowly but surely put together a seven inning game. Nine strikeouts, four hits, only walked one man and allowing two runs, uh, three altogether. Two earned runs. So thank you, Matt Mutchison. Here's Zach Ball on Twitter. Man, oh man, the coach reaching out. Here's Darren Hardy at the plate. As we cruise along here into the bottom of the third. Hardy, the left fielder. But uh, Coach Ball from the Mount Allison Mounties women's hockey team. He's getting ready for to get right back at it in AUS competition. Zach cheering on John Saunders. Ball hit to center field. Herb Branson settles under to make the catch. Back to the top of the order for Ori Cook. But uh, Coach Ball cheering on John Saunders. Great to have you with us, Coach. We'll be talking to you soon as we get ready for AUS competition. Of course, Bella Lyon Community One, the exclusive provider of the AUS on the webcast and on television. Start of a five-year package with Atlantic University Sport. It is going to be a dawning of a new era in coverage of university sport in Canada. One and one. A count here on Ori Cook. So still a long way to go in this one. Again, only in the bottom of the third. And there for a strike. One and two. You Nova Scotia fans watching, this is a seven inning baseball. That's the standard at Nationals. And pretty much everywhere. It's Nova Scotia, as far as I know, is still the only circuit that plays the nine innings. Up high, two and two. And speaking of Nova Scotia, Darren Muck checking in from Halifax. Great to have you guys with us. You guys got rain tonight in Halifax, finally. Needed it badly in that Halifax area after that heat wave. So great to have you with us, Darren, on a rainy night in the city. Talking about the uh, the amount of beer being sold right now, yeah, the lineup at the Sud Zone isn't very long right now. And there could be again some correlation between this BC start heads up over there on the first base side. Full count pitch coming up to Ori Cook. Shane Kramer out there for his third inning. He's been pretty dominating so far. He's given up two hits and a walk here. So the Ironmen managed to get a base runner in every inning so far. Had runners at second and first in the second. Now back to the chat of Mike on Ironman number 11, Pat Godin. Second baseman's Godin. So Ori Cook on board with a walk. Here's Pat Godin. He flew out to center field back in the first. Fishing on the first pitch and fouling it to the backstop. Pretty decent lead for Ori Cook at first base. Again, he's got to be careful. 
Swing and a miss, a big, healthy hack there from Pat Goodan, just missing. They go in two. Another good lead for Cook. There's your pickoff move, and again they got him picked off, but dropping the ball, and then into left field goes the throw. But Kramer, again, had him picked off. Ori Cook had nowheres to go, but uh, first baseman Morrison took his eye off the ball just as it was about to get into his glove, and it bounces off the webbing. And speedy Ori Cook goes a second on the play, but there's that pickoff move, and you could just see it coming. And that would have been the second pickoff for Shane Kramer. But uh, Morrison couldn't make the clean catch. So a runner at second for the Ironmen. A big break there. Ground ball to second for Pat Brown. Fields it cleanly to third, or to first, sorry, to get Pat Godin for the second out. Godin out four to three. And Ori Cook goes to third. Kyle D checking in, cheering on the Sun Devils. Great to have you guys with us. Kyle out there in BC saying, get it done, boys. Right now, so far, so good for Kamloops, six nothing. But the Ironmen have a runner at third. And there for a strike at the knees. <laughs> Cook's feeling very lucky over there at third base. One and one. I wouldn't be surprised to ever find out if Kramer's caused a guy to twist an ankle or a knee or a ACL on that pickoff move. It gets guys <laughs> going to second base and first base so quickly when they see the move coming. Two and one the count. And therefore, strike two and two. Kramer a strike away from getting out of the third. Iron Man trying to push across their first run. The 2-2. Two -two. Just off the outside corner. And a full count pitch now. First base is open. Top of the fourth coming up. Her Branson, Brown, and Hole do for the Sun Devils, the two, three, four hitters. Lefty Kramer, strike three, sets down Robert Gallant on strikes. No hits, one left on, the one error. For the Sun Devils, doesn't come back to haunt them. And we go to the top of the fourth here. A six nothing game. For the Kamloops Sun Devils representing British Columbia or the Chatham Iron Man, the host team. And great to have you with us. B McLean Sports on Twitter to reach out. Thanks to everybody who's reached out so far. Settling in for a weekend of baseball. Four games tomorrow from each field, beginning at 10 a.m. Six o'clock for you guys in BC. These are all Atlantic times. 10 o'clock, one o'clock, four o'clock, seven o'clock. Scheduled start times. Games moved along real quickly today. We just had one game that barely got over two hours. We had an absolute throw down pitchers duel here in our second game between Ontario and Quebec. A one nothing game. Denny Deschamps. Robbie Murphy on the mound now for the Ironmen. But uh, Francois Lafreniere of Quebec and Rob Nixon just went at it. 
Lafreniere got the win, one nothing. Uh, again, Danny Deschamps came around to score in the first inning, and that was the only run of the game. Lafreniere would strike out 11, allow one hit, three walks, and a seven inning masterpiece. And Nixon, he was right there, he was just as good. Through six innings, he struck out eight, only allowed four hits. But the one run in the first was the difference. That was a lot of fun, only took 90 minutes to play the game. Nixon, a draft pick of the Cleveland Indians who was playing double A baseball right up to last year. And uh, Francois Lafreniere was a draft pick of the Atlanta Braves in 2010. One of the miniature, those small little uh, doors out there. In the green Munster, and wall extended open there, so they close that. And we're ready to go in the top of the fourth. Pitch just outside for Robbie Murphy. So Eric Herbranson, Pat Brown, Dave Holt. In there for a strike, one and one. Herb Branson walked and was stranded at second and then walked and scored on that three-run homer by Dave Hole. The 1-1. One -one. Swung on, hit sharply to third, and Chris Keating flashes the glove on the far side to make the play. So a hard line out for Herb Branson to start this fourth inning. Here's Pat Brown. And first pitch at 8.15, so we're about an hour and five minutes of game time here. Getting a little bit cooler, some folks starting to put on some sweaters. And again, a breeze blowing from in from right field. Pretty persistent, about 10 to 15 kilometers. Temperature's still in the mid-20s with the Humidex. Just outside, two and one. Pat Brown struck out looking back in the first and then singled and scored on that David Hole three-run homer. Looks like from up here he went around, and sure enough he did. The challenge down at third. Now two and two on Pat. Bobby Murphy trying to settle things down and keep this rate at six. Iron men still have at least four plate appearances. Or four at bats, I should say. Still just the top of the fourth. This Iron Men crowd just waiting for something to happen. Bouncing ball to first, no problem for McDonald, feels it cleanly. Pat Brown now one for three. David Hole popped up to McDonald in his first appearance and then had the big hit of the day so far, only the third home run. And it was uh, a bomb to left center. About 15 feet above the Green Monster, which extends 16 feet from the field. It was a no doubter off the bat. In there for a strike from Murphy. The 0 1. The 0 2. One, two. Down low, two and two. Be careful here with Dave Hole. Evan Douglas will follow. 
if David reaches. Called strike three. One, two, three for Robbie Murphy. We're midway through this thing. Six nothing for the Kamloops Sun Devils. And coming up to the plate, Chris Keating, John Saunders, and Andrew McDonald are the four or five six hitters for the Ironmen. <laughs> this is a great point. I was, when I, as soon as I said that, Gary Brown reaching out on Twitter. As soon as I said that, I knew I realized I sounded pretty soft. I actually like the cold weather. I don't like the heat. I'm a cold weather guy. But uh, after I mentioned that some folks have put some sweaters on and then I said temperature's still in the mid-20s, I realized those two comments didn't really make sense. But I just, as I looked around, there were, there were a few people put on sweaters. But it is still an uh, absolutely beautiful night here. Uh, 24 degrees, feels like 31 in Mirror Machine. So yeah, it's still hot here in Chatham. And again, these Chatham folks, they love that hot weather, man. They just soak this right up. I was talking to um, Brian Richard, one of the organizers. I was telling the story earlier. My first call with Brian was earlier this week. And when I called him, he was out for a run. He's the president of Run New Brunswick. And so he finished up his run as he was talking to me. And it was right in the middle of the day in Chatham. Sorry, just this guy staring right at me as I'm talking. Um, okay, there you go. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Brian Richard, yeah, he's on this run. And in the middle of the day in Chatham. And uh, I said, are you on a run? He said, oh, yeah, just finished up a run. And it was about 35 degrees. I checked the weather network in Chatham, and he's out there running around. But, of course, he's the president of uh, Run New Brunswick as well. But Gary Brown, yeah, it's still a beautiful day. And we got some uh, uh, East Coasters watching from Edmonton. Lance Woodman checking in. Great to have Lance with us. Cheering on Chris Keating. So here is Keating right on cue, Lance Woodman. Cheering on Chris from Edmonton. Some East Coasters out there. Nice play, Pat Brown. Great pick at first, and there's one of the defensive gems of the day. Brown ranging to his right to one knee, up with a good throw, and a great pick at first by Morrison. So Keating out four to three. But again, Lance Woodman watching there in Edmonton. New East Coasters. He missed the green in the fields and the streams. I believe it's that the lyric to that Stan Rogers song. Talking about living out west and missing Atlantic Canada. Here's John Saunders. John struck out back in the second, the Iron Man icon. Talking to some folks up in the uh, the main press box earlier, and they said they heard, they're thinking John's got one year left in him. <laughs> they're making fun, hoping those hamstrings hold up. The 1-1. One, one. Shane Kramer fielding his position well. The strike to first base to retire John Saunders. For the second out of the inning. There's Andrew McDonald. McDonald flew out to left field in his first appearance. In there for a strike. Kramer rolling along here in the fourth. The 0 1, fouled off, 0 and 2. And Kramer a strike away from getting out of the. Fourth inning.
In there, called strike three. Kramer freezes McDonald. One, or a th one, two, three. Go the Ironmen in the fourth. And Kramer has only allowed two hits. Struck out three. As the one pickoff move, again, should have been two. But Morrison wasn't able to make the catch on it. But uh, Morrison made up for it with that great stab of the throw by Pat Brown to retire Chris Keening to start the inning. All right, so we'll go to the fifth. Evan Douglas, Will Devick, and Luke Simpson coming up for the Sun Devils. More on the Twitter, Shauna Erdman. Thank you, Shauna. Sending a shout out. For the Kamloops Sun Devils saying, go Fun Devils. Hashtag Team Mum. Thank you, Shauna. Supporting the boys from back home in Kamloops. Again, you guys got to set your alarms bright and early. 6 a.m. you're on the air tomorrow for your first game. I want to set it for 5.30, 5.45 so you can get at least one cup of coffee in you. And they get ready for Sunrise Baseball in Kamloops here from Chatham. And that's a good one, too. You're going to want to get up for that game. If you're a British Columbia fan, a Kamloops Sun Devils fan, you're going to want to wake up for that 10 a.m. Uh, game at Waldo Henderson. I wouldn't mind, actually. I might have to see if Roger Surrett will switch with me in the morning. That's a real good one. Nova Scotia, the Sydney Sooners, and the Kamloops Sun Devils. That's Sydney Sooners team. They are really confident right now. And it's going to be real interesting to watch because both teams have a lot of speed on the base pass. The Sooners have won two straight Nova Scotia titles. And they're, they're the confident group heading into this one. So the Sooners and the Sun Kings. Or Sun Kings, Sun Devils. At 10 o'clock at Waldo Henderson. One and oh. In there for a strike. One and one. Evan Douglas, Will Devick, and Luke Simpson. Foul down the third base side. We're in the top of the fifth. Robbie Murphy out there for a second inning at work. Set down the Sun Devils in order in the fourth. High foul ball coming this way. McDonald coming over again and that's going to bounce in just over the bleachers and past the Community One trailer. McDonald again gave good chase but man you got to be careful when you get over to that wall. Comes up to about your mid thigh. You might go over the top. One and two. Swung on and sharply hit to Chris Keating. Evan Douglas out on the line out to third. Hard to get anything past Chris Keating at third base. Here's Will Devick. A single for Will. Back in the second. Came around to score. Walked in the third and was stranded at second. Pitch out in front of home plate. The 1 0 for Murphy. Simpson to follow, and should anyone reach Rob Morrison? High and outside. Oh 
Just off the plate, low one outside. And inside, a four pitch walk for Will Devick. Sun Devils with a runner at first. So here's Simpson. And there for a strike. The old one. One and one as it bounces past home plate. You Iron Men fans, you're back with us here at Iron Men at 1 o'clock. Up for you tomorrow is Alberta. A really good team from Red Deer. The Red Deer Riggers. Always very competitive. The 2-1, that's fouled off. And heads up in the concessions area. Actually, I went into the net. Two and two. At first is Will Devick. A moderate lead at best. And again, fouled off the net on the first base side. The second sliding in safely is Devick, and now he's in scoring position. So one out, a two and two count. Out in front is Simpson. He's out on strikes for the second out of the inning. Rob Morrison. Rob doubled, scored in the second inning, and struck out back in the third. In the top of the fifth from Iron Men Park. Swung on and fouled. Down the third base side. And here's Morrison with that great batting stance. With the high socks going on. You can just see it right out of those black and white videos. Chopper back to the pitcher. Fielded cleanly. By Murphy, the throw to first. And Morrison out. He's now one for three. So a walk, no hits, one left on. They send four men to the plate. And the Iron Men again will come to the plate here in the bottom of the fifth. So a long ways to go in this one. Bottom of the order coming up, Sean Corcoran, Morgan McLean, and Darren Hardy on Bell Alliant Community One.
All right, so it's stretch time at Ironman Park. Everybody on their feet. And hopeful that the Ironmen can get the bats going here in the bottom of the fifth inning. But they are facing a guy who is not easy to get anybody on base. And then if you do get to first base, you gotta be careful you don't get picked off. Aaron Lestang on Twitter. There's Corcoran. Got hit by a pitch back in the second inning and was stranded. Put her in the harbor, says Aaron on Twitter, saying the hammer down, boys. Swung on and to center field, and the Iron Men have the first man on. Sean Corcoran in the fifth inning. Their third hit. Corcoran now one for one with his second appearance on base. Now batting for the chat of Micon Iron, number 45, Morgan McLean, the catcher, McLean. Here's Morgan McLean. Kramer out there for his sixth inning of work. Just three strikeouts for Kramer, but he hasn't walked anybody. Just the one hit batter. He's used his defense behind him. Pretty much pitches primarily from the stretch. Sean Corcoran being very careful at first base. Pitch in there for a strike. Two and one coming up for Morgan. Lined out to shortstop in his first appearance. Bouncing ball. Down the third base side and just foul, barehanded by Devick, but it rolled out of bounds. The 2-2. Two -two. Swung on and fouled down the third base side. The 2-2 two -two again. And there's your pickoff move, and they've got him again. Oh, my. Unbelievable. Sean Corcoran didn't even have much of a lead. But, again, just frozen. Couldn't move as the pickoff move was being made. And he's picked off first base. And, I mean, he had maybe a three-step lead at the most, but just could not reach back to first. And Corcoran, another victim. So there's your second victim, and again, it would have been three, but Morrison couldn't field the second one cleanly or couldn't catch the ball there on the second one. Unbelievable. And a strikeout now of Morgan McLean on caught looking. And just like that, something building for the Iron Men. And nobody's on with two outs. The pickoff move, the strike three pitch. Here's Darren Hardy with nobody on. Kramer and out away from getting out of the fifth. High and outside. 
and I feel like I've talked about it so much, but how can you not, how can you talk about it too much? I mean, it is just devastating. That move to first. He snagged two guys, and it should be three. And we're only in the fifth. The 1-1. One, one. Now the 2-1. Swing and a miss. Two and two, and again, Kramer a strike away from getting out of the fifth. Bradford, Reed, and Heb Branson, or Herb Branson, sorry, do up for the Sun Devils. Foul, and out of play. Just missing some cards, so funny to watch <laughs> when the Foul ball goes in the parking lot. Everybody's looking and they're almost kind of hoping for a hit. Not their car, obviously. But where the foul ball lands, always a, a high point of interest. Solid base hit up the middle for Darren Hardy. And right back to first base goes Hardy. And he's one for two now. Here's Ori Cook. Pitch low and outside. One and out. Swing and foul tipped off the umpire. Catcher Douglas asking if the umpire is okay. If he says he's all right, I'm sure Douglas would have gone out and had a quick meeting at the mound to give the umpire some time. He's all right. The 1-1. One, one. On the outside corner, 1-2, and again, Kramer a strike away. 6-0 ball game here in the bottom of the fifth. Fans would just love to see something in the gap or down the line. Anything to get an Iron Man chugging around bases. They won't get it. Swing and a miss for Ori Cook. He's out on strikes. On the pitch low and outside of the zone. Iron men send four men to the plate. They get two hits. They leave one on. One more devastating pickoff from Kramer. And now we go to the sixth inning with Bradford, Reed, and Herb Branson coming up for the Kamloops Sun Devils. All right, more action on Twitter. This is a shout out to Charlene and Bobby McIsaac watching in Toronto. Great to have you guys watching from Toronto. Cheering on Chatham is Bob. This is from uh, Ryan Summers. So Charlene and Bobby McIsaac, or Char Charlene and Bobby McIsaac. Watching from Toronto, great to have you guys with us. That's from Ryan. Ladies and gentlemen, check your 50 And we gotta check our 50. Gotta check our 50-50 here. $2,000 is the 50-50. 29-12, I'm not going home with $2,000. 2,000 bucks for some lucky fan tonight. And the 50-50. Uh, Carlos Avia watching from beautiful St. John. Great to have you guys with us. St. John Phillies players supporting their friend Rob Murphy, who's on the mound right now. Rob Murphy pitching for the Ironmen. So great to have the Phillies with us cheering on Rob. 
Thanks very much, Carlos, and you guys watching from St. John. In St. John, two weeks ago, we had coverage of the um, Marathon by the Sea in Uptown St. John. What a fun weekend that was. Of course, we're in one of the friendliest places you'll ever go to, the Miramichi. But man, oh man, and not, they don't get much friendlier than St. John, New Brunswick. What a time we had there. But again, thanks to the organizing committee here in Chatham and everybody who's just gone above and beyond to get us set up here. Just good times all around. So far this weekend. As we come to the culmination of opening day. And it is a statement for the Kamloops Sun Devils. Six nothing over a very, very good Chatham Ironman team. Two runs in the second, four runs in the third. The big blast, the three run bomb by Dave Hole. Up high. 3 0 quickly on Ben Bradford. Ben's two for two with three RBIs. Not a bad day from the number nine hitter. Two for two, two singles. Hasn't scored a run, but he's got the three ribbies. So three RBIs for Hole on the, on the three run home run. And Ben Bradford has three RBIs. Swing and a miss for Ben on a big hardy hack. Just a little tardy on that 3-1. And now he'll settle in for the full count pitch. They're still trying to find the 50-50 winner. So maybe we'll get a second calling. Can only hope, only hope. Bradford with the walk. Here's Brendan Reed, the shortstop, his fourth plate appearance. Haven't seen him for a couple innings. He had three appearances in the first three innings. He's 0 for 3, grounded out three times. Just missing inside. So Murphy on the mound with the Phillies watching back in St. John. Pitched well so far. He's only given up one walk, hasn't given up a hit. Two walks now with the walk, of course, to Bradford. The 1 1. High and outside. The 2 1. Just off the plate, 3 and 1. Six hits. For the Sun Devils, four for the Ironmen. Runner goes. And oh, that, yeah, they throw down a second, but that was ball four for Brandon Reed. So Reed down to first, two walks in a row. And Bradford. Nobody gave Brendan the heads up that there was a walk. Scott Devinson for Kamloops. In to hit for Eric Herb Branson. It's 
Scott wearing number one, batting from the right side. In there for a strike, one and one. Scott from Kamloops, he's a 28 year old, stands 5'8", 145. Takes a swing at the 1-1 one, one pitch, now 1-2 and two as he fouls it down the first base side, or third base side. The 1-2, no outs, runners at first and second. Swing and a miss for Nevison, out on strikes. Here's Pat Brown. And they're still trying to find that 50-50 winner. But nobody's claimed that uh, that 2,000 bucks yet with the 29-12 ticket. They may be. That's why you never rip up. If you're an experienced 50-50 person, you never rip up your tickets after the first number is announced. You always hold on. Runners at second and first. They're gonna get past the catcher, McLean. Runners go to third and second. This is Adam Halland. Now in at second base. No bad for Pat Brown. Adam batting from the right side. Breaking pitch in there for a strike. One and one. Not a bad game for Pat Brown. He went one for three, singled and scored a run. High and outside. Two and one. So anytime in three at bats, you get a knock. Touch home plate. That's not a bad day. Foul down the first base side, heads up in the concession area. That goes off the hot dog stand. Uh, tarp. Two and two. Called strike three. So two strikeouts in a row for Murphy. Working his way out of this jam. Runners at third and second, though. And here is, I don't know, they're going to be a, a pinch hitter for David Hole, I think, as well. Sean Schaefer. Sean Schaefer. Sean Schaefer will bat for Rob Holt. Batting from the right side, 0-1. Pitch out in front of home plate with a 6-0 lead and Shane Kramer rolling along on the mound. Uh, Sun Devils taking the chance to get a bunch of guys and at bat at Nationals. Due up in the bottom of the six for the Ironmen is Gadant, Gallant and Keating. That's scheduled. Pitch just off the outside corner. And there for a strike, three and two. A few folks have decided to call it a night after the 50-50. Again, a late start, an eight o'clock start here in Atlanta, Canada. 
working day tomorrow here in the city. Swung on, and that is, finds a hole on the left side. Scoring is Bradford, scoring is Reed. And now eight nothing on the two RBI single for Sean Schaefer. And he'll go to second as the throw went home. And eight nothing for the Sun Devils. And now you start thinking about the Mercy situation a little bit. Iron men aren't in too much trouble yet, although Evan Douglas at the plate represents the Mercy rule run. If he comes across, that'll make it 10, and the Iron men will have to score in their bottom of the inning. That gets to the hole on the left side. They're going to hold Schaefer at third. Douglas with a single is at first. So now the Mercy rule run is at first with Will Devick scheduled up. And they're going to go talk to Murphy. Don't see any action in the Chatham bullpen. Kyle Sandalescu, the Kamloops guy. On the roster, they have his age at 117. This is it's one old dude right here. Should have been playing in that seniors tournament in Yarmouth two weeks ago, the old timers. So I'm not sure how old he is, but they got 117 on the roster. Kyle Sandalescu, batting from the right side. Wearing number 22. He'll bat for Will Devick. One to no on Sandalescu. A little number to short. Gallant to first. And I'll get Sandalescu on the six to three. And that'll do it for the Ironmen in the six. Or for the uh, Sun Devils in the six, sorry. They do push across two more. They send seven men to the plate. Leave two men on. Get two hits. No errors on the Ironmen. Oh, they do have a winner in the 50-50. Tom O'Reilly wins the 50-50. Ironman Iron on the field twice tomorrow. One o'clock versus Alberta. And then again, join us tomorrow night for that Nova Scotia game. That's a real good one. That's a seven o'clock game for you Ironman fans. That's gonna be a, a lot of fun for Atlanta Canadians watching the Ironmen versus the Sydney Sooners. A rematch of the uh, crossover game, the crossover qualifying game from last year in St. John's. The Ironmen defeated the Sooners in extra innings on an RBI hit by Dave Barr that somehow found the outfield grass between Chris Head and Phil Brown. A game that just had so many incredible moments and the Ironman again would go on the next day to lose one nothing in extra innings to the Langley Blaze. Sooners and Ironmen tomorrow night at seven o'clock. That'll be Sooners, a real confident group now. That'll be looking for revenge on the home field of Chatham. So a lot of fun tomorrow night and. The Iron Men will be looking to rebound, assuming they go on to lose here against Alberta at 1 o'clock. That Red Deer Riggers team. Swung on, high in the air. 
Another play on the first base side. So Pat Gaudin, the second baseman, in there for a strike, and he's out on strikes. Caught looking. Gaudin now over three as Kramer continues to roll along here. Six strikeouts now for Kramer. He's been building up that strikeout total over the last couple of innings. He struck out three of the last five men he's faced. Robert Gallant. Slowly but surely, a lot of folks wearing red. Starting to head to the aisles, but again, a late start to this one. So right now it's just before 10 o'clock here in Atlanta, Canada, or in, yeah, in Atlanta, Canada. And folks gotta get up and work tomorrow. 10.05. As we go on, just under two hours of game time. A late start in this one. 8.15. The 2-1 count from Kramer. Swung on, hit sharply down the third base side, but just foul. Uh, bullpen activity for the Kamloops Sun Devils. There are players up. Pitchers up there in the bullpen, so we'll see what's going on. Looks like they're getting a left-hander and a right-hander up. Uh, this is, just had this on Twitter, sorry. What are you losing, Connor? Tyler Lowry, there we go. Uh, sorry, Tyler, I missed that in between. The tweets from uh, Carlos. Again, Carlos reaching out on Twitter with all the Phillies there, watching from St. John, New Brunswick. Cheering on Robbie Murphy. Uh, Tyler Lowey uh, from Kamloops. There's your pitch. Fouled off. And we'll do the full count again. A good at bat here for Robert Gallant. Uh, Tyler sending a special shout out to the Kamloops birthday boy, first base coach Ryan Frederick, or Ryan Friedrich. So, Ryan Friedrich. Happy birthday, Freddie, from Tyler. First base coach celebrating his birthday here in beautiful Chatham. High pop fly on the first base side. Giving chase is Morrison and just can't extend far enough to make the catch. That's actually Jay Huggins who's coming to play first base. A good try down there for Jay. Mark reaching out on Twitter. Thank you, Mark, from uh, Mark Bowes Auto. Hoping for a great Nationals weekend for the Ironmen. Hashtag hit it to the highway. Of course, the highway to Bathurst goes just past here. We're right by the bridge that connects Newcastle and Chatham. Oh, man, that foul ball just missed a group of girls by the concessions, about seven Girls over there huddled around the cars. Nearly one of them nearly took it off the noggin. Whole bunch of really nice Hondas here that are in trouble as well. <laughs> Those foul balls. On display from our major sponsor, Miramichi Honda. That time a beautiful Honda Accord nearly got hit. Swung on to left field. And there's a hit for Robert Gallant. Maybe the best at bat right there of the game for Chatham. Gallant making Kramer work really hard. And then lining one in to left field for a solid knock. So Gallant at first base, here's Chris Keating. Gary Brown reaching out on Twitter. Mentioning that the Sooners tomorrow morning will be happy not to see Dave Barr. Of course, Dave playing with the Royals this year, his home team. Last year he was the Iron Man and he absolutely wore out the Sooners in that game. 
made the, the a lot of the, we, we always talk about the Chris head catch in that game that pushed it to another inning. There's a bouncing ball that's going to find a hole on the right side. Runners at second and first. Back to back singles for Chatham. So runners at second and first. But uh, I was there at Mount Pearl doing that game, and it was a cold, wet night just outside St. John's. And it was a game that came together late. Again, they finished up the round robin and they sent the teams off to the field in Mount Pearl. And it went late into the Mount Pearl night. There was a bit of, bit of a fog going on as well, a persistent mist. And again, the Ironmen winning in extra innings and part, do well in part to this man at the plate, John Saunders, who hit that three run bomb off Cam Marley. But Dave Barr, aside from the game-winning hit, also people forget about the catch that Dave Barr made in left field. A spectacular running catch in deep left center. Picked the perfect angle on it. Can't remember who hit the ball, but what a catch that was. You BC fans, if you set your alarm again, you'll have fun with that Sooners team in the morning. That'll be a real good game from Waldo Henderson with Roger Surrett. One and one. Two and one. The first jam of the game for Kramer. Well, they had runners at second and first in the second, did the Ironmen, but at the time there was two outs. Right now, one out, runners at second and first, trying to hold on to that shutout. Ironmen trying to build confidence for the weekend. Again, they got the big two games tomorrow. Saunders, that went off. Saunders. Looks like his front leg there, the right leg. And he's going to take some time to try to shake that off. And you can see John's got the padding on there. What a sight that was last year, John Saunders hitting that three-run home run. Hobbling around the bases. The 2 2. Saunders to left field. Off the wall, off the Miramichi Honda sign. Runners got a good jump on it. Scoring is Gallant. Saunders safe at second. And the Iron Men faithful who have stuck around finally have something to stand up and cheer about. An RBI double for John Saunders. Chris Keating goes to third. They thought about sending Keating. Would have been close at home, but at this point, obviously, there's no need to send Chris Keating. You need guys on base. You gotta go station to station here. Try to put together, you are playing for a five or six run inning at least. So Saunders finally unleashes one for this Ironman team. Right on cue as we were talking about his blast from last year. Then we're going to have a pinch runner come in for John as well. And he'll get a hearty round of applause. One of the favorites here at Ironman Park. Jimmy Russell will come in to pinch run. So Jimmy Russell in to pinch run for John Saunders. Eight to one.
There's Andrew McDonald trying to keep this going. Iron inside. Russell at second base, running for John Saunders. Chris Keating at third. Swung on, fouled back. Here's the 2-1. And therefore strike two and two. Reach the two hour mark. We started at 8.15. High and inside, this is our first game of the day to get well into the two hour mark. A full count pitch coming up. Shane Kramer. Here comes Kramer. Swung on, hit sharply to third, fielded cleanly by Devick. And they will get the out at first. Ke uh, Keating will score on the play. Obviously, the uh, Sun Devils counting outs now. Well, no need to challenge Keating at home, so he'll score uncontested. Andrew McDonald. Out five to three. And here's Sean Corcoran. Just off the plate. Umpire's gonna give the plate a sweep here. I tell you what, for 10, 15 at night, on a working day tomorrow, and an eight to two lead for the visitors, there are still a lot of fans here. Not too many people have left. That'll do it for the Iron Man here. Another nice play by Sandalescu. That was two plays in a row for Sandalescu as he replaced uh, uh, Devic at third base. Made that one look easy. The Iron Man push across two. Three hits, two runs. One left on. We'll go to the top of the seventh here in an eight to two lead for the Sun Devils. Murphy goes out there for his third inning, uh, fourth inning of work, check that for Murphy. He's pitched really well, he's only allowed two runs. Got into a bit of a jam there in the sixth, seven men came to the plate, two runs on two hits. But he stranded two. He's only allowed two hits through three innings. Got himself uh, three strikeouts against this very good Sun Devils team. So you Phillies fan, are you Phillies guys in St. John? Not a bad night so far for Murphy. Chris McKay into the game. He'll play second base for Gadam. Chris McKay at second base for the Iron Men. And now just as I said that, that a lot of a lot of friends, fans were sticking around. There is a mass exodus out of the ballpark here. Eight to two. Like I saw the Saunders hit. Saw the team trying to make a charge. 
a couple more hits and they would have got to within a workable deficit. But chances are pretty slim. They're gonna pull anything out with Kramer on the mound in a six run deficit. We'll see if Kramer comes out to finish it again. Lots of action there in the Sun Devils bullpen. Two guys up throwing. The other thing about this too uh, is that the parking lot is full. And there's one exit in the parking lot. And it is small. Single line traffic only. So uh, it is not going to be easy getting out of the parking lot. So some folks trying to beat the rush. Swing and a miss. That'll do it for Luke Simpson. He's out of strike for the third, out on strikes for the third time in the game. So a tough night for Luke. An 0 for 4 with three Ks for the left fielder. Here's Jay Huggins who took over for Rob Morrison. His first appearance. Morrison one for three with a double and a run scored. Swing and a miss for Huggins. 0 and two. We're in the top of the seventh. Four runs in the third. A big inning for the Sun Devils team. Jane Kramer rolling along. Only allowed, he's allowed seven hits. Hasn't walked many people. There's been three errors behind him, including the error on what should have been a pickoff. He's got two of those and it should be three. Looking to win, uh, Shane Kramer looking to win his second national championship in as many years with two different teams. Pitching for the team that he no hit on July 31st in the BC playoffs this year. Swung on and hit hard to left field. That's gonna come off the wall, off the piece of the light sign. And Huggins will try for second. And he is gonna slide in safely. The hesitation nearly cost him. Pause for just a brief moment, come here out first, but he will slide in safely to second. So a double for Huggins. Now back to BC, number nine, Ben In there for a strike. They all want. Hot shot to third. Gets up on Keating. Keeps it in front of him. Fakes the throw to first. That'll be a hit. That was a rocket to third. Took a wicked hop. Not the first time. That's the second time we've seen a third baseman have to deal with a a uh, real wicked hop over there today. That last bounce just past the bag. Really came up on Keating. I'm assuming that'll be called a hit. We'll see what the people who actually know what they're talking about decide to score it. Runners on second and first. And therefore a strike from Murphy. Brendan Reed, up for his fifth time. He's 0 for 3, reached on a walk 
And now maybe a double play ball. Yes, sir. One, six, three. Nicely done. Murphy. Gallant, McDonald. And that'll be a nice end for the night of defense for the Chatham Ironmen. So a tough night for Brandon Reed. Five plate appearances, 0 for 4 with the walk. Did score a run. One hit, one left on. No Chatham errors. And we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. One last chance for the Ironmen. We'll see who they send up. Morgan McLean, Darren Hardy, and Ori Cook are scheduled. Well, again, you're on Battle Line Community One, our ongoing coverage of the championships. For the second year in a row, last year we were in St. John's, Newfoundland. Next year, hope to be in Fredericton with you. Part of this incredible three-year stretch of Atlantic Canadian baseball. Hosting these nationals. So they will bring in a reliever here, Jason Swick. Try to finish things off. A very comfortable eight to two lead for Jason. Or Jason Tripp, sorry. So Jason Tripp, Cam Loops, he's a 22 year old. Young fella gets to get out there and make some pitches at a national championship. And thanks to Mark Andre, our cameraman, Jamie Como, our producer, Brian Fisher, executive producer. Getting ready for Friday, right back on the air tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Atlantic time. And for you BC fans, you got to set your alarm early. You got the Sydney Sooners waiting for you at 10 a.m. That's going to be a lot of fun. And your Fredericton Royals fans will get you guys here at Iron Men Park. You're going to see the Saskatoon smoking guns. Royals feeling very good about themselves. The New Brunswick champs from last year. The home run derby winner in Jody Peterson. And the aforementioned Dave Barr. Hot shot down the first baseline, and that's fair. And there's a single for the Ironmen. So the Ironmen have a man aboard. Jeff McCarthy came in for Morgan McLean. So McCarthy at first. And Nick Hardy. <laughs> well, Cam, <laughs> this is great. Cam uh, Strachan, 25, <laughs> reaching out on Twitter, saying it's called a closer, but Cam, I don't know when it's a six run game, my man. There's a, a pock on uh, the pitcher. So again, thanks very much for that, Cam. But again, with a six-run lead, I'm not sure if it's that uh, terminology. But sure, Cam. Get in on that with the Twitter. I'll take your word for it. 
Fouled out of play on the third base side. Jason Tripp coming in to close out the six run lead. Just high and outside here, two and one. Coming in to shut this thing down. McCarthy at second base. And fouled off. by Nick Hardy. Nick in there batting for Darren. Foul out of play on the far side. Two and two of the count. Fouled off again. Good at bat here for Nick Hardy. And Tripp, he's a Cam Loops guy. He had a step off. He's given up the hit and the balk, but this guy is nasty. That's some mean stuff. And Nick Hardy doing a good job of staying alive. And the Kamloops Sun Devils are serving notice tonight to the folks here in Chatham that uh, BC very much in contention for back-to-back -back national championships. They are gonna be a force to be reckoned with. Another balk, that's a big issue right now for Jason Tripp. Yeah, that's got the fans that have stuck around on their feet all the way to third now on the second balk. Goes McCarthy. Swung on, the deep shortstop. And just on the cusp of the grass, making the catch is Reed. So Nick Hardy, the first out of the inning. Here's Ori Cook, the center fielder. Ori 0 for 3. Check that 0 for 2 is Ori. He had a walk and reached back in the third. Foul battled on the uh, third base side. 0 and 1 quickly on Ori. And they're 0 2 quickly on Cook. If you want to see uh, great interviews with the Iron Man, you can see, check out East Coast Sports Show, our summertime show. Fouled off by Cook, 0 2. Cook trying to 
It's the second time he's had a hot foul ball to the uh, Sun Devils dugout. <laughs> Shauna Erdman. This kid, this kid is mean, I tell you what. Shauna Erdman on Twitter. Uh, when Trip pitches, you're in the danger zone. Bouncing ball to the third. And they're going to say he held on. And that's going to get a minor protest from the Ironmen. I think they feel like Huggins' foot came off the base on that throw across. From Sandalescu. The run does come home. Ori Cook is irate. Jeff McCarthy scores. To make it eight to three. All right, here's McKay. McKay took over at second base. And the Iron Men are down to their final out. All in one. One and one. Iron Men, fan, Iron Men fans are just giving it to the first base umpire right now. Down here on the third base side, or first base side. One and two, and the Iron Men are down to their final strike. Aaron Lestang reaching out on Twitter saying, it's eight to two, it's not a big issue for Jason. No, it certainly is not. This kid is a fireballer. Two and two. Iron Men have done well to have put some good at bats together against him. They put the ball in the field. The 2-2 two -two to McKay. Well out in front of home plate and a full count pitch. The 3-2. That's in the dirt and McCarthy down to first base. Or McKay down to first base. Robert Gallant is scheduled. We'll see if they bring somebody in to hit. Oh, it'll be Gallant. Number three hitter in the lineup. Robbie grounded into a double play, struck out, and singled and scored. Going on about two hours, 22 minutes of game time. Pitch in the dirt. Miss now two and all. Three and all. <laughs> and another Bach. Oh my lord, what a developing storyline this is here in the seventh inning. That's the third Bach called on Jason Tripp. And the infielders are going to come in and talk to him. Morrissey Bridge calling it a night. Great to have you with us tonight. Remember Morrissey tomorrow, 1 o'clock and 7 o'clock. Alberta at 1. The Red Deer Riggers. And at 7, the Sydney Sooners. So let's check that 2-0. and That pitch waved off. And the Bach sending... McKay to second base. And that's going to get past the catcher, and the runner will go down to third. Well, again, it's been a dominating performance by this Sun Devils team. But this is really probably not the way they want to finish the game off. But 
The Ironman obviously still a long way to go. The 3 0 count with a runner at third, two outs. And Gallant will probably look at a couple. In there for a strike, three and one. The three one. Swung on to short. This should do it. It will, the Sun Devils. Come into Iron Man Park and right from the start. Attack the Iron Man offensively. Two runs in the second, a three run bomb in the third as part of a four spot. Two runs in the sixth. Three RBIs for Ben Bradford. The three RBIs.